Welcome to Virtualize Everything. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to set up and install Home Assistant 24.2 on your Proxmox system as a VM. And this is the easiest way I've found of doing this and requires absolutely no scripts. So go ahead and follow along and maybe you might find a fun project. As of today, February 7th, the day of filming, Home Assistant 2024.2 released. So let's take a look first at where we're going to find Home Assistant to download it. And then I'll show you the steps of how to install and set up Home Assistant VM in an extremely easy manner that requires no scripts. First thing we're going to do is click on documentation and go to installation. And we're going to scroll all the way down to install Home Assistant on other systems. And we're going to click on the tutorial. At the top of the tutorial page, it's going to give us three VM options, VirtualBox, KVM slash Proxmox, VMware, ESXi, vSphere. We're going to choose the Prox KVM Proxmox. We're going to right click on it and we're going to copy link address. Now we're going to go over to our Proxmox web interface and we're going to select our server. Then we're going to select shell. With our shell open, we're going to type wget and we're going to paste that address and we're going to press enter. This will download the Home Assistant image directly to our Proxmox server. Now that we're done downloading the Proxmox image, we're going to temporarily close our shell and we're going to prep our Proxmox system for the VM. And we're going to do that by clicking create VM and giving it a name. I'll call mine HA today. You can call yours whatever you desire. I'm going to hit next and for OS, we're going to select do not use any media. Next and we're going to select a BIOS of UEFI and we need to select a storage location. In my case, it's going to be local LVM because I have no other drives attached. And we're going to uncheck pre-enroll keys. Then we'll hit next and we'll go ahead and delete the disk drives. Press next. Proxmox Home Assistant requires two CPUs and two gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage. The 32 gigs of storage will be provided by the disk image that we download from Home Assistant, so we need to worry about the two CPUs and two gigs of RAM. Heading back to our Proxmox web interface, we're going to give it two cores, so we have two CPUs. Then I'm going to hit next, and we default at two gigs of RAM. We can up this for better performance if we choose but I'm going to leave mine as two gigs today. Network, you'll need to configure your network for the settings that you have set up inside of Proxmox. My, most likely, it's going to be Bridge VMBR0 on a default system. My network's a little bit more complex, so I'm choosing VMBR3, and I'm pressing Next, and then I'm going to hit Finish, and this is going to create us a VM. Once our VM is finished being created, we're going to head back to our shell and at our shell we're going to enter ls copy the file name that downloaded you can type this if you so desire i like to copy and paste though and i'm going to type unxz space and i'm going to paste that file name press enter this will take a couple of minutes to run when it finishes, it'll return you back to a command line. We can hit ls, and you can notice our file name has ch changed from ending with .xz to just .qcow2. We'll copy that name again. Then we're going to enter qm import disk, the file name, or rather import disk, then the VM ID number, mine was 102, then the file name, then our location, which for a default install using LVM will be local LVM. We'll press enter. And now that we've returned to the command line, our disk has been imported into Proxmox and we can return to the Proxmox web interface. At the Proxmox web interface, you'll show that a unused disk zero has appeared under hardware. So you'll select your VM hardware and then you'll see your unused disk zero. We'll select our unused disk zero, press edit, and this will allow us to turn it into a hard drive. All of these settings should be good, but if you are on an SSD, you should check discard. I'm on a platter drive, so I'm not going to be doing so. I'm going to click add. 
and this creates a hard drive at SCSI zero. Now we'll head to options and boot order. We're gonna press edit. We're gonna uncheck network and CD-ROM and we're gonna check SCSI zero. Once we've done so, we can go ahead, press start and open our console. Home Assistant will begin booting up. And now that Home Assistant has booted up, you're gonna get a screen that looks like this. You wanna pay attention to the IP address. Mine is gonna be 192.168.28 and this port number 8123. So with that, we can go to our web browser and we can enter our IP address 192.168.28 and then a colon and 8123, press enter. And if you get a screen that looks like this, Home Assistant is up and running and ready for you to configure it. I'm gonna conclude this video here as the configuration process is going to be personalized for you. And there's other great videos on YouTube that pick up where we left off. I hope you enjoyed tonight's episode and you found this educational and were able to get Home Assistant up and running quickly. As always, have a good night.